Yellow just blocking in the house in my road. Gotta make it put it on. She don't like wearing clothes. Just left Concord, no Carolina. I was licking on booty in the whole lot of vagina. Eat a booze with some ice cream. She remember you. Ice cube make a gym. Shaving like the winner do. do. Sitting with the crew. I done did some food. I see you looking like a dude. Had to make a move. Make a move. What up, y'all? Stand up, mighty, aka the Global Dark Skin Ambassador. And listen now, I've always heard about the Khalif Browder story, about you know Jay Z putting a documentary together and all of that. But I never took my time. First of all, I still never seen that documentary, and I never took my time to even do the slightest bit of research into the situation. It just kind of like wasn't important to me. But I recently took a couple minutes, not like extensive amount of time, but just a couple minutes to gloss over what the internet says about the Khalid Browder case. And based off of my judgment from actually being in Rikers Island and analyzing the situation, I think Khalid Browder was a gangster. I think he's a gangster. He was a gangster on Rikers Island. Not only that, I think... He was failed. Yet another young black kid failed by New York's judicial system. Okay, so I was not aware of the fact that he spent three years on Rikers Island for being charged with stealing a bag. And then um, he didn't do it. And he refused to cop out. So that's why he spent so much time. Now... I do know that if you have a a uh if you don't have a paid lawyer, they will continue to push things back and they will, you know, they will try to offer you time or whatever it is, whatever it is, in order for you to cop out. You know, I believe the system makes more money when you cop out. And they don't be wanting to take the money out to go to trial. And it seems like he wanted to go to trial. I don't remember going across how he got home, so I'm not going to speak on that. But for his time in Rikers Island, I say that I believe he was a gangster. And by gangster, I don't mean bully. I don't mean like a high-ranking gang member. I don't mean a menace. I mean like he wasn't with the program. He was tough. He stood, he stood on, he stood down on 10 toes. That's what I mean. And what I mean by that is like, I've seen two videos, okay? One video where Khalif Browder was getting roughed up by police while he was in the box. Mind you, when you in the box, right? When you in the box, you are handcuffed. The whole time. You're not coming out of your cell without being handcuffed. So he's handcuffed, being escorted out of his cell. And then he just starts getting beat on by police, right? And that one time they caught it on camera, if they caught it on camera one time, it happened more than once, okay? It happened more than once. So he clearly had issues with police. Police had to beat him up at least that one time. But I'm going to say more than one time. You caught that on camera one time, at least two to five times that actually happened, you know? So picture just being handcuffed and getting beat on. Then mind you, mind you, if you get into a fight, you get into a fight, just like out in the town, if you make police run or something like that and they catch you, they're going to spank you, they're going to beat you up. If you, if you make a CO have to do paperwork, and they get their hands on you, they're going to beat you up. And then they're going to write you up and send you to the box. So that's one situation. This dude looked at very, very, very small. He looked at, he looked like at 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, tallest, tallest, you know what I'm saying? Um, being abused by police, big grown men. And he was 16, 17 years old, left when he was 18, okay? That's foul in itself. Now, secondly, I seen the other video where it appears like somebody may have spit on him or something. May have spit on him or something, and he popped that bottle. But it looked like he popped that bottle on somebody who 
Maybe it been a high-ranking gang member. Or at least somebody who was one of the, the gang members that was connected to a high-ranking gang member. And so they jumped them. And I got a little bit triggered when I'm watching that because I'm like, yeah, this, this definitely happens. You could easily remove him from that video and put me in it at any random point of my time in Rikers Island. And that easily would be me too. Just get smoked. Get smoked for offending the wrong person because you're not with it. You're not with the program. And for those of y'all who don't know what the program is, that's getting slapped up anytime people want. That's being forced to have Friday night fights, slap boxing matches. That's, that's giving up your phone calls. You know, that's being extorted out of commissary, being forced to do the uh-oh booty dance and take violations. Being forced to do the don't hurt me blood, don't hurt me dance, standing in the toilet. Being forced to clean up after a bunch of people who don't respect you and don't like you and don't care if you live or die, you know? That's what being with the program is, you feel me? It's, it's, it, you know what I'm saying? It's being a slave and being humiliated on a daily basis. Being called a day room dummy. That's what that is. But it seemed like he popped that bottle. He was some type of threat, you know? So when I say he was a gangster, I mean, he was tough. He was tough. He was tough. And he wasn't trying to let nobody violate him. You know, like, and then see, I'm a little bit, it's a little bit misconstrued with me because some reports say he spent two years in solitary confinement. Other reports say he only spent a year and a half. It seems like it was more a year and a half than two years, but you know, two years, it, says, it sensationalizes it more. I feel like if he spent all that time in the box, I don't believe it was two years straight. Cause you gotta like, you gotta like get into a fight and like break somebody jaw or something to get that much time. I believe it was like little just infractions that kept adding up. And before you knew it, he was in the box for two years. You know, but that's because he kept fighting. He kept getting jumped. He kept popping it off because he wasn't with it. And imagine for him to be five, 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 six, always going to the box. Spending, spending half or most of his time on Rikers Island in the box to go home like that really does something to your mental you know like being in solitary confinement can really ruin you if you don't if you don't have enough people to call and talk to on a daily basis mind you you only got six minutes in the box a day you only got six minutes and that's if the police is on good terms with you if not they, they walking right past yourself and then if you call somebody and they go to voicemail, your call is over for the day. So imagine that. You really going through something. You want to call your mother or your girl. But it just so happened that they phone is off or something. They in, they, you in New York City. You call somebody, they on the train. And they immediately go to voicemail. So now you got to hope in 24 hours you get to talk to them again. Just imagine that. Just imagine Spending all this time in the box, right? And you don't have nobody to talk to. You getting beat on by police. You locked up for a case for a crime that you didn't commit. You got to deal with all this drama, all this abuse from people on Rikers Island who bigger than you, trying to extort you, popping that bottle off on you all the time. You got police popping that bottle off on you. And then you in solitary confinement. Like, if you ain't got no connections with no porters or nobody, it's like you can't you can't get a radio. Hopefully you are, you can at least get a book. But other than that, you just stuck. You just stuck. It's it's four walls, small. It's small, right? You get your regular food. You can't season it. So you get your regular nasty jail food or whatever. And people was just screaming all day. All day, people screaming to each other. 
talking a whole bunch of nonsense, screaming all day until they go to sleep. You to, to, to take a shower, and you might not even be able to take a shower every day, they got to handcuff you, walk you to the shower, handcuff, and only give you two minutes, and then they handcuffing your ass and taking you back where they got you from. Not to mention, if you get into a police at any time, they could go in your cell and jump you. Jump you and get away with it, and you already in the box. So, like I said, I feel like Khalif Browder was a gangster, man. I feel like he was tough. He was tough. And our system failed him. Why? Because, one, he's a black kid. Two, and most importantly, he did not have a paid lawyer. And this is what happens when you don't have a paid lawyer. I don't get it. He would have had a paid lawyer. He would have made bail, but because he didn't have, he would have made bail and been out easy. Probably would have never even spent a, a week in jail, right? But because he didn't, he had to spend all that extra time in it. You know, all that trauma, you know, if you ain't used to that kind of trauma, and you spend all that time in the box, you'll go home and, and your mentor will never be the same. And that's what happened to Khalif Browder, man. I feel like he was a gangster on the island. I feel like he was tough. He handled himself the way he was supposed to. But he spent a lot of time in there. And it wasn't meant for him to do that. And it messed with his mind, you know? He probably battled depression and all that when he got home. Rest in peace, Khalif Browder. Those of you watching, if you got people who you love that's spending some time or you know they're gonna have to spend some time in there, go visit them. Pick up the phone call when they call you, man. That phone call you pick up could probably be saving their life. Like, share, come, subscribe, peace.